This Sunday, we have the match of a century. Your favorite producer, Sidney Carlisle versus Kyle Glockner. It's a slam, jam, punch out extravagant. Wait a minute. It's not a battle. It's an episode on punch cards. What is up, fellow wanderers? I'm your guide, Kara Krause. Welcome back to 300 Seconds of Science. A high resolution picture taken with your phone takes up about five megabytes of storage space. What makes up a megabyte? A byte is equal to eight bits. A kilobyte is equal to 1,024 bytes. And a megabyte is equal to 1,024 kilobytes. Five megabytes of information is equal to... 41,943,040 individual bits. This is the size of one bit in comparison to that image. I'm telling you this because it puts into perspective how much information is being stored on our portable devices, like computers and cell phones. To appreciate the way we store data these days, we are going to be looking at the former gold standard for information storage and processing. Punched cards! To understand the way punch cards work, we first need to talk about binary, the foundational level for all modern programming. Modern binary has been studied since the 16th century, but it dates as far back as ancient Egypt, China, and India. Binary is a base two language, meaning it only uses two symbols to communicate. In its case, one and zero. When translated into machine language, the number one is like a yes, and the number zero is like a no. One sends a signal or instruction, whereas zero will not. One yes or no answer is a singular bit. On the most commonly used punch cards, the IBM 80 column, there were 80 columns across 12 rows, containing a total of 960 bits of data. Remember the picture from before? If we divide the number of bits in five megabytes by the number of bits an individual punch card can hold, we would need 43,690 punch cards to process a selfie. The earliest industrial application of punched programming was by Basile Bouchon for the semi-automation of the textile loom in 1725. The machine would read the punch paper tape and pull the threads up in the pattern if the tape was punched. This was later improved upon and became the basis for machine automation, inspiring functions similar to piano rolls. A punch card with 10 rows of numbers would start with a row of zeros and end with a row of nines. To enter a binary digit, you would key punch the row under the column you wanted it to show up in. If you were writing a line of code and starting with the number three, you would punch row three in the first column of the card. A card reading machine would take the card in then brush over and record the locations of each punch. The punch locations are a binary one or yes, and the rest of the card is a binary zero or no signal. The side of a punch card read begin procedure, both words which were reserved in programming language to indicate the start of a new string of code, just like curly brackets today. The procedure's name was listed next, followed by the procedure's parameters or arguments in parentheses. So a programmer would record data on their card using a key punch, and when they were done, they would hit enter, the card would fly off the key punch and onto a stack of completed cards. Even though punch cards were the widest used method of data storage up to the 1970s, it was a fragile system. The greatest pain imaginable in the punch card process was dropping a completed stack of unnumbered cards with no indicator of their order. Try putting 2,000 punched cards back in order with nothing but general knowledge of the stack's contents. Cards being sorted incorrectly or prepared out of order could ruin the entire stack. To mess with their coworkers, people would take a lace card with all the holes punched out and sneak it into the middle of somebody else's stack. The lace card was not only unreadable for being nothing but yeses, but it would jam the machine. Imagine talking about that at the water cooler. Well, looks like we've hit our closing bracket. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, give us a heart on Instagram at ZTV 300 Seconds of Science. Go out, enjoy life, and stay curious. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy-winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.